you guys, Tomboy61, and today we have a review of the Minotaur. We'll be going over in a build, the mod slots, the consumables, going over a game, and you know, just talking through the ship. If you're interested in that, make sure you stay tuned. So first things first, Minotaur. It is a legendary tier ship, and it is currently the campaign reward ship. Now, you may be saying, but I don't want to buy the campaign, but I really want the ship. Do not worry. Next update, Minotaur does go to the Bureau. So, hey, if you don't want to buy out the campaign for this holiday season, don't feel any pressure to do so. You can still earn this ship with relative ease. Just, you know, a little bit of extra time. Also, a perk for those of you that uh, do buy, that do purchase the campaign, when you earn the ship in the Bureau, if you decide to research it, you're going to get a big old payday, which is really, really nice. So, uh, with all that said, let's go ahead and just start talking about the Commander and the modules. We are running William Tennant. Now, you can run a lot of different builds on this ship. This ship is extremely versatile and... As such, it, it can be run with a bunch of different kind of commanders. Currently, I'm running William Tennant, the one that I'm waiting to be able to run until I have enough of the universal accommodations to rank all the way up to uh, Legendary 4 is Tierwit with Smogathon because uh, I feel like that build would be particularly nasty with Minotaur. But as it stands, we are running Tenet. Let's go ahead and run through what we have here. Of course, Tenet's base trait is going to decrease damage to Citadels. That's useful because uh, when we get to the armor, you'll see Inspiration's running Mikawa to help with con uh, concealment on the cruiser. And then Nikolai Von Essen. You already have improved pen angles on these AP, but this improves them even further, which uh, makes it very useful. And then the other skills we are running is Ingenious, Full Speed Ahead, Velocious, steer clear and then fully packed uh i find that this kind of set of skills makes you just a tad bit more survivable and uh in minotaur you're gonna need it as far as mod slots go we have four mod slots i'm running aiming system mod one in the second mod slot because we are a british light cruiser we do not have access to prop mod and so uh it's only a choice between steering gear and damage control and really that's an easy choice for that steering gear. Next, we are running the concealment mod. I don't think you'll ever want to run steering gear mod just because uh, you do not want to be caught out in the open in this ship. You you will get deleted uh, by pretty much anything. Concealment mod, much more useful for this vessel. And finally, we have main battery mod three, which is going to help with uh, boost the reload time because you know what you need in the ship? More reload because more reload is more better. Finally, let's go ahead and take a look at those consumables. You do have four, a fully, a full set of those consumables. First one is going to be that damage control party, five second duration with a 60 second reload. The next is going to be the repair party, a huge heal and repair party. And I believe it does also help heal back Citadel damage because uh, there's, there's times where you take hits and you're like, there's no way that wasn't Citadel damage given how hard it just hit me. And this ship just heals it back. Uh, 865 damage per second. It's going to last 20 seconds. Reload time is 80 seconds. And with fully packed, you're going to get three charges. Sonar, 3.4 kilometer detection on torps, 4.9 kilometer detection on ships. It's going to last 100 seconds. Reload 180 seconds. And you have three charges of it. And finally, you have the choice between a smoke generator and a radar. I highly suggest taking the smoke generator over the radar. The radar makes it really hard because it is a kick-ass radar, 9.9 .9 kilometer radar with a 40 second duration, which is awesome. But I think smoke is just where it's at with this ship, just because uh, if you are spotted, you are dead, is kind of how I feel in this ship. Duration, uh, it's going to expel for 15 seconds. It's going to sit for 113 seconds. Reload is 240 seconds, and you get three charges. And those are all of the consumables on the ship. Now let's go ahead and start running through those, uh, through the stats of the vessel. So hit points, 43,300 hit points with an armor thickness between six and 127 millimeters. We'll go ahead and look at the armor view now. And as you can see, um, the majority of the ship coated in 16 millimeters of armor. Yeah, there's not much there, guys. Uh, I, I think almost everything at the tier can overmatch you. That's... That's how thin of armor. I think destroyer guns may not be able to overmatch, but beyond that, everything else can overmatch you. And uh, 
it will uh, punch right through that huge citadel that is stepped and sitting out of the water. That's right. Uh, you, you don't. You just don't want to be seen in Minotaur. Uh, any shell can hit you for huge amounts of damage, whether it be AP or HE. Every single encounter where you are spotted, it is going to hurt and hurt badly. So uh, try to stay hidden. Uh, torpedo reduction on the ship, 21%. Main battery, the star of, of this ship, five two-barreled 152 millimeter guns with a firing range of 15.3 kilometers. Reload time of 2.8 seconds, giving you 214 shells per minute. It is a machine gun and it is beautiful. 180 time, 5.2 seconds. Being the characteristics that it is, it does not have HE, it only has AP. That AP damage, 3,200 per shell, giving you a DPM of 684,800, which is absolutely insane. Uh, I do believe that is best at tier because this thing chews through ships. It is absolutely insane. No secondaries to speak of on this vessel, but it does have torpedoes and surprisingly good ones. Four, four barreled 533 millimeter torpedoes with a reload time of 96 uh, seconds. Damage on them, 16,767 with a detectability range of 1.3 kilometers and a top speed of 62 knots and a range of 10 kilometers. And you do have them as British torps, meaning you can single fire or narrow spread fire them. And at 10 kilometers, with a concealment of what this vessel can do, you can stealth fire the torps on this ship, which is kind of weird coming from a British cruiser, but it's just an awesome little quirk of this ship. AA range, six kilometers with a minimum AA damage of 118 and a max of 494. This ship uh, absolutely tears through uh, planes. So it is a very good anti-air uh, platform as well. Max speed of the vessel, 36.6 knots with a turning race of 660 uh, meters and a rudder shift time of 7.4 seconds. Concealment, this is another star of the show. 9.9 uh, .9 kilometers by sea, by air, 6.2 kilometers. And when firing in smoke, it's going to give you a concealment, a smoke fire penalty, I should say, of 5.8 kilometers. And if you run someone like Belfast, you can get that down even lower. So really this ship is a uh, is a star all around and it, it's become my favorite legendary tier cruiser i'll be clear i liked british light cruisers to begin with this one just made me love it even more so with all of that said let's now go ahead and take a look at a game in the minotaur so here we are on the map greece and well uh i'm sure you can kind of guess with what we've been saying so far in this re review, Minotaur needs cover and it needs to stay in that cover all game. But if it can stay in the cover or stay hidden somewhere on the map, it can do tons of damage. So we're gonna play this middle spawn on B. We, we spawned in middle and we're going to play this midsection on B. This can be dangerous, but it could also be extremely good for us damage wise because it gives us access to pretty much any ship on the map. We just have to make sure we are in cover because if we are not in cover when we are firing, we could uh, potentially get wrecked, as they say, very, very easily. So we're going to push into B, try to hold B for the entirety of the match. Be a real thorn in the side of any ship that tries to push out because, well, by the time we get into B, we have a beautiful radius in which we can start peppering any sort of ship around the map with. So... Right now, establish ourselves in B and then start picking off targets. As far as my thoughts on Minotaur while we do this and we start kind of just raining down fire on the other ships, I love this ship, guys. It is it is absolutely incredible. It is a highly technical ship to play, though. I, I want to get that warning out there. If you are spotted at any point and someone decides to shoot at you, you will be gone off the map. Like, there's no angling. If that GK could see us right now, he could full full broadside fire at us, and if a couple of shells hit us, we might be gone. That's that's just how weak and just how exposed the Citadel is on this vessel. So uh, be warned, this is a ship that absolutely rewards good positioning, that rewards good play, and punishes you very, very harshly if you are not able to live up to the standards of, of positioning. Uh, and 
yeah, that's that's kind of the way this ship plays, and I absolutely love it for it because uh, it's it's absolutely what legendary tier needed. It needed a ship that can that can make destroyers cower, and uh, forty second radar at nine point nine kilometers if you if you so choose or being able to rain down AP death from above. Uh, also very, very powerful because of the improved pen angles. Now, that's something I do want to talk about. Uh, I think I'm one of the few people, one of the few CCs who's running improved pen angles on the already improved pen, pen angle AP. I was having some struggles with getting hits. And uh, after I put Von Essen on, I really found that to, to help out with being able to uh, get more pens and get more damage and more consistently because there will be a lot of times you'll just start shattering, especially on the uh, the decks of some of the battleships at the tier because they're only 152 millimeter guns. They they do not have uh they do not have the the greatest pen. It's just about getting those good pen angles. But as you can see, we've gone ahead, taken B. We're seeing where ships pop up. We haven't done much damage yet, but the good news is we are uh you know. We are able to kind of start punishing people who push in. D appears to have itself a, uh, a enemy destroyer that has dug in. Enemy team does have three destroyers left. We've lost one of ours. Uh, Yudachi kind of floating out there. Uh, and we're just going to try just to start throwing the, the AP towards people. Now, this is one of the things that also takes some time and getting used to is the AP on, this, on these ships. Uh, the AP is just like kind of American destroyer guns. It it's kind of floaty and the further out range you are, it it kind of kind of hurts to 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 take the shots and you have to kind of be aware of what's going on. We can now see this uh Alaska is starting to push into B. Maybe he's going to try to contest it or maybe he's just going to try to push through to us because let's be clear, we're probably just one good salvo away from dying to that Alaska. So we're going to go ahead and try to set up a uh, torpedo sort of uh, a torpedo ambush on him because guess what? Uh, Minotaur has some fantastic torpedoes. They are uh, quite powerful. They have extremely long ranges for what you would expect out of a torpedo, uh, especially from a British cruiser. Um, they're not too quick, kind of middle of the road when it comes to speed. I think it's only like 60 something knots, which isn't the fastest. So uh, long range torps aren't really the best option, but because of their range, they can be used to kind of zone people in, kind of force them to go along certain lines, punish them if they're going in straight lines, or because you do have both the narrow and single file, fi single file kind of fire, you can absolutely also punish people uh, and use them kind of for point defense, assuming they don't get knocked out. They are very exposed torpedoes, and given ships like the mines being very prevalent at tier seven right now, uh, HE, Fire will absolutely disable them and disable them uh, with extreme ease. Anyways, Alaska coming around the corner right now, and we will lay one just in the front of the indicator, one on the second half of the indicator. Keep on turning. He right now, thankfully, distracted by a battleship that is also pushing into B. Uh, thankfully with that, because uh, if he had looked at us, it would have been very bad news for us, but we do take him out right there with the devastating strike on the torpedoes. Uh, Yamato out at range, looking to see if we can go ahead and start picking him, picking away on him. He takes a massive salvo right there, and uh, we have the range to kind of engage him. That it, uh, the firing angles on the ship also very, very good because, uh, as you would expect with kind of AA guns, they uh, are able to fire over islands relatively easily, especially when you kind of push up to them and kind of are able to use the islands as cover, even when you can't receive or you can't get receiving fire back. Vlad sitting in the back right there. We find this nice little hole. Uh, we can see, we can kind of just start pumping out damage on him. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. But we also need to keep an eye on that minimap because we can see GK kind of starting to push in to B as well. And uh, to torp him is gonna be a little bit harder, mainly because he does have sonar. So we do have to be aware of his sonar. We do also have this little gap right here that we're gonna be able to take a peek at him when he starts to push in. Uh, we see we get spotted there and we're spotting each other. We're gonna go ahead, his secondary starts to go off. We get one good salvo out from there, but we're gonna keep reversing because uh, with the Alaska, it worked out very well to uh, to just kind of uh, use the torps. We're gonna reverse in right here, uh, try to pick him up on the sonar because we do have what, 4.9 kilometer range on the sonar. So not quite GK range, but pretty decent and a lot longer going. So even if we kind of 
give him the idea to use sonar to locate us. Given how slow he goes, we may be able to sneak these torpedoes off without him being ever the wiser and for him to go ahead and eat it. Vlad takes a big hit there. We finally spot uh, G at GK at four point something kilometers. First set of torpedoes out. We're going to see what he does as we set out these torpedoes. Second set of torpedoes out. Uh, at this point, I think he's probably running sonar because he, let's be clear, we probably gave him the idea of, oh yeah, I have a sonar. I could be doing the same thing to him. Uh, and now we're just going to kind of keep him on the leading edge. Our rear guns being able to uh, get over the that little back island, back part of the island, giving us some pretty good damage right there. Torpedo, one torpedo hits from that first salvo. Second torpedo hits from the second salvo. We did cause flood. He did use his repair party. And now it's just a damage-a-thon. And uh, we can see the shells coming in. I don't know how close they land. Those look like they just missed us. And uh, we're just trying to aim and do damage up in that superstructure because we need to knock them out. Second set of shells in. Thankfully, they go past just over the rear of our ship. That's two ships down, 173,000 damage now loaded in. Um, it looks like our team up at sea has pushed through um, and they are currently enga engaging that Vlad. And uh, now what is left is a mines and I forget what the last destroyer is but that mines now engaging our destroyer we're going to start to try to kind of duel with him because it's going to be a toss-up with mines especially with the amount of he damage it can put out uh who can win a duel but we both kind of are long range spammers so uh to at least put some pressure on him while he's firing at our destroyer is the right thing to do and kind of the team play especially while our uh our team has finished off that vlad and is capping d so we have the uh, numeric superiority here so we're just going to kind of stand by here finish what we can we are spotted which means we do need to pay attention and be ready to uh engage another destroyer if need be especially right now that can be dangerous because we've lost spot on the mines but uh he but we are still spotted uh by the enemy destroyer we lose spot right there and pick it back up which means he's probably somewhere in an island that just kind of went behind cover and popped back out uh, we are at full detectability. We Once we drop it, we don't really need to worry about him anymore. He's like, oh, he's actually at somewhat of a range. And then he was all the way behind us. He was coming in for the stealth torp. So we're going to turn turn our guns and just engage him really quickly. Just a couple of salvos will take care of him uh, if we can land before the uh, our friendly destroyer blows him up. But sadly, a uh, friendly destroyer ends up taking that kill. So now it's just us in the mines. So we are going to kind of shoot the gap and try to get over to A. Uh, if we can, take the cap at A, kind of uh, force the game to end sooner if this mines decides that running is the best solution. And here you can kind of see what happens when the ship is out in the open. Just look how quickly the armor on this ship starts melting away, That those hit points with every hit the, that uh, comes in with the mines just hurts us. We can also see just how quickly our uh, torp tubes got uh, destroyed right there. Uh, we are kind of trying to heal the damage as it comes in. We get behind the island right here, and that's kind of going to be our safe harbor. It's going to put the move into the mines court. Does he want to push in and try to engage us, or does he want to continue to uh, sail for the map's border and wait for the end of the game? Either way works for us, but right now we're going to try to get some extra, point, some extra points through both capping and also just getting in that damage. We get spotted through the teeth right there. He kind of puts in shots at us. Thankfully, the island is there to kind of cover us. And now we can see just how well sustained fire can do on ships like the mines, where we're getting two grand, three grand to salvo. And uh, it, it hurts. It hurts real bad in some of these ships. So, uh, you know, remember, Minotaur, very powerful ship. I would also almost say that uh, if, if you see a Minotaur in game, it may be more valuable to shoot a Minotaur than a destroyer which is crazy because I know the usual the usual uh, kind of advice is if there's a destroyer spotted, you shoot at the destroyer. Um, I, at the point where I've seen play, I think uh, if you see a Minotaur spotted, shoot at the Minotaur because if it has, like us, we still have a fairly large complement of our smoke screens ready to go. Um, if, it, if, if that Minotaur decides it can hide and uh, escapes, it can cause so much damage. Uh, right up there with how a destroyer can absolutely cause tons of damage. So we're going to go ahead, start sailing just straight for this island, try to close the distance. We can see this plane pop up right here, which tells us he is relatively near. 
twist and track on the Fletcher tells us that he's right here. And this is the, this next engagement is where I want you to watch just how bad it can be for a Minotaur that is caught in open water. Look how much damage me and this mines do to each other and just kind of internalize that that is the kind of thing you want to avoid because it can be absolutely nasty, um, especially when you start trading blows and when you don't have the armor to really uh, to stand up. But in that brief little engagement, we lost half our health and we were able to take him down. But yeah, guys, that's the Minotaur. Like I said, quickly becoming my favorite ship at Legendary Tier. A ton of fun and well worth the campaign or well worth the Bureau research when you get to it. Guys, if you like the video, go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. See ya.